here in this room, or marble room, you have many, many different ways, sorry, to, to enter this room, to connect the different works. The central piece of, of this room is this installation by Giulio Sarmento. We just talked about Giulio Sarmento uh, upstairs with the work The Prince of Hamburg that was demonstrating already how much Sarmento was interested in the, the world of culture, that the, the source of his work or one of the, the logic behind his work was to go uh, look at art history, look at uh, a forest of existing signs that belong to the cultural history to feed his work. Here you have a stage and with the Prince of Hamburg you have the stage suggested because it was a theater play. On this stage, you have this oversized dancer and you can see the position of her body. This is a typical position of a, of a young dancer. Uh, and it goes to an icon of uh, art history, to an icon of sculptural history, which is uh, uh, Edgar Degas young dancer, which is a, a sculpture which is extremely well known that uh, exists in many uh, collections. Uh, but it is a, a, a sculpture, it is an image, it is an object that almost belongs to the shared knowledge, the shared history, the common language of art history. It's also a sculpture of a young dancer, which is very much charged with, with eroticism. And, uh, and she's dressed, she has a tutu, she has a leg like that. What Sarmento does is like he's not beating on the bush actually, he's going right there and reveal almost the erotic fascination that many art viewers have had with the Degas dancer. On the wall, you have this also, this quote by, by Degas, who say, I want, je voudrais être illustre et inconnu. I wanted to be famous and unknown at the same time, with a pun here playing on the word, because inconnu, unknown, ends with nu, naked. So the nakedness of the, of the dancer uh, is reflected on the stage. Julius Sarmento left, uh, left us last year and I wanted, when we were installing also this room, to do a bit of a tribute uh, to Julio Sarmento. And he's surrounded by other artists who were his friends. And you will see in this room and in the next room, artists were almost his, his chosen family. And you have the, the, the Spanish artist here, Juan Munoz, with his work called Main Courante, uh, Coremao, uh, this element of architecture that actually run through the entire exhibition. We have three in the exhibition, one upstairs when you start the exhibition, one here in the middle and another one in the last room of the exhibition. This main courante, it's a little bit like the modus operandi. In every exhibition you have a main, main courante, meaning you have an ID, you have a set of concepts, a set of forms that uh, sustain the narrative of, uh, of an exhibition. Here, I think we talked about that earlier, this main courante is this notion, this ID that uh, eventually art uh, can change the world, which was embedded in the first room of this exhibition with a tribute to Joseph Beuys. There is something also very moving in this piece when you connect it to the, the passing of time that we talked about with Fishley and Weiss, with On Kawara, with Adrian Piper, is the fragility of fragility of things, fragility of life, because this main courant, this Cormao, here is uh, inserted in this wall, but everything is just balanced, and it wouldn't need much, actually, for this, uh, this object, which is usually an object that we can actually lean on and put strength on to actually collapse. So there is almost a contradiction in this work with this freestanding wall and this object that is actually unreliable. With the passing of Sarmento, uh, we also wanted to do a bit of a, a tribute. I mentioned that he was surrounded by his friends, but with his work here, this mirror by the artist, the Porto-based artist, Mauro Cerqueira, there is also this notion of the, the, the morning mirror in uh, some Mediterranean culture. When you're mourning someone, when someone just 
passed away, uh, you cover your mirror. You cannot decently look at yourself in the mirror during the time of mourning. Here, with Mauro's work, you have this almost this effect because the mirror has been covered drop by drop by wax. So with a, a, a black candle, he has covered, again, drop by drop, suggesting the passage of time, the mirror, making the reflection and the portrait impossible. The only thing you see is a little bit of the shimmering mirror behind, uh, behind the wax. And of course, with the, the wax dripping, you almost have a religious aspect uh, coming out of this work.